So this is a question that was asked of me by a student. The problem deals with torque and the calculation of torque. There are a few quantities given and it looks very complicated to a student. So let's break this down. But I suggest that before you look at how I solve this problem, uh, you should take a few minutes to try to do it on your own. So here is the question. It's a figure. The figure shows a uniform rod AB of mass M is equal to 3.63 kilograms hinged at its top end to a fixed horizontal ceiling. So you have a ceiling here and this is the rod. The bottom end of the rod is uh, connected to a string. So here is a string and the string makes an angle phi is equal to 30 degrees with the ceiling. So that's 30 degrees. If the angle between the rod and the ceiling is 40 degrees, so if this angle is 40 degrees, determine the magnitude of the tension in the string. So that's the question. All right, I, before we do this problem, I just wanted to give you an idea of what torque is. So let's say that there's a point A where we're trying to calculate the torque and F is the force applied. So you have to consider the line of action of the force, which would be this line, and then multiply the force with the perpendicular distance of the point from the line of action. So that's the line of action, and that means the torque due to this tau, tau is the symbol for torque, would be F multiplied by AC. So that's, that should be clear. That's a line of action and the perpendicular distance from that point to the line of action is AC. So that's how you calculate torque. But what if the force was applied exactly at A? Well, then there is no distance, is there? So the torque due to that force would be zero because the distance of that force from the point is zero. And if the force was applied somewhere here, similarly, the distance that you multiply would be AD. Because you always take the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the point where you're calculating the torque. There are forces at the hinges, but we need not consider the force at the hinges for this reason. That if the force acts exactly at the pivot, where we are calculating the torque, then the perpendicular distance is zero and therefore there is no torque. That's why we do not consider the forces at the hinges. So now you should try to do this on your own. The length of the rod is not given. Uh, the only quantities that are given are the mass of this rod, which is 3.63 kilograms, and then you have these two angles. This is 30 degrees and this angle here is 40 degrees. Those are the only two angles given. And we've got to find the tension in the string. The tension in the string is obviously upwards. It's like that. And we can take that as F sub D and we can try to find it. So let's go into it. Let's look at how to work out this problem. So I'm drawing this diagram again so Ft is the tension and the, the weight of the rod acts vertically down through its center of gravity. So that should be at the middle of the rod. So this is the midpoint. So if you take the length of the rod as L, then obviously this distance is L by two because the weight acts vertically through its center of gravity. And because it's a uniform rod, uh, its center of gravity is exactly at its geometric center. Okay, so the tension can be resolved into its two components. You see the horizontal component here and the vertical component here, right there. Let's get into that. This angle would be phi because of the geometry of the diagram. So since this is phi, this will also be phi because parallel lines cut by a transversal alternate angles are equal. So that's why you get this as phi. And once this is phi, this 
is going to be FT cosine phi, because when you complete this triangle here, you are going to get this as the adjacent side. It is the adjacent side of the angle, and the adjacent side is always cosine. And the opposite side here, which I've drawn here, would be FT sine phi. All right, so that is what we have so far. And I'm just trying to show you how to get those components in case you're confused about it. So that's FT and you have this right angle triangle, this angle is phi. The opposite side is always, FT, uh, is always sine theta because sine theta is defined as opposite side by hypotenuse. And so this will become FT sine phi. This is the adjacent side of the angle, means near the angle. So it becomes cosine, because cosine is defined as adjacent side by hypotenuse. So that's why this is FT cosine phi. Okay, now we should look at the torque acting. There are uh, three torques acting. Uh, first of all, what is torque? Torque is the product of force and the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the point. So here, we're going to calculate the torque about this point, which is the hinge. So A is the hinge. And so all distances are going to be measured from A. So when you look at Ft cosine phi, and this is the line of action of the force, right? This line. And when you go for the perpendicular distance, you, this will be the perpendicular distance between the line of action of that force and the point. Okay, and similarly, when you look at this force, this is the line of action of that force, Ft sine phi, and the perpendicular distance from that point would be this. So I'm gonna draw another triangle there and you're gonna get it, okay. And also whether I draw it here or here is the same, that's what I was trying to show there. So this is FT sine phi as well. The weight is actually trying to turn it this way, which is a clockwise torque, and while FT cosine phi is trying to turn it this way, FT sine phi is also trying to turn it that way. So that means FT cosine phi and FT sine phi both create counterclockwise torques, see, counterclockwise, while the weight is creating a clockwise torque. Okay, so the clockwise torque is created by the weight and the weight is mg, but when you take the perpendicular distance, you're gonna get this as the perpendicular distance, and that is going to be L by two cosine theta. Okay. So it's going to be mg times ad, see? ad is the perpendicular distance between the line of action of this weight and the point A. So ad is that distance. And from this little triangle, you see that because this is theta, this is going to be cosine theta multiplied by this distance ae, which is half of the length. So that's why it's L by two cosine theta. So the clockwise torque is mg times L by 2 cosine theta. Let's look at the counterclockwise torques. I've drawn the triangle now and that angle is also theta because when you take the counterclockwise torques, remember you need Ft cosine phi times what? Times AF. Okay. Plus when you take Ft sine phi, the torque due to that, you need that times Bf, you need that, because that's the perpendicular distance. And Af is L sine theta, because Af is the opposite side, so it's L sine theta. And Bf is, of course, L cosine theta. So therefore, we're gonna set these two equal to each other, for equilibrium and so the clockwise torque is equal to the counterclockwise torque. So mg into L by two cosine theta is equal to this whole thing. 
I'm having to write that again. All right, once we write that, all that we have to do is look at it carefully and you see that there is L on both sides. And we're not even given the, the value of the length. We don't need it because we can cancel it out, right? We cross that out. The length is gone and mass is 3.63, G is 9.8. And then cosine 40 by 2 on the right side. We're calculating, trying to find FT, so we do not know that. Cosine of 30, sine 40 plus FT, sine 30, cosine 40. Okay. And then we uh, plug in the values of that. So this is exactly what we wrote. Let me move that fast. So this is what we had. And then we... Use a calculator, plug in the values carefully, and you get, on the left side, you get 13.625, and on the right side, you get these two numbers. Okay, so this is 0.55, so you gotta do that carefully. It's cosine 30 times sine 40 that gives you that, and then sine 30 times cosine 40 gives you that. Okay, so you have these two, FT is of course common, so add these two numbers. That gives 0 0.9396. And on the left side, we have 13.625. Therefore, FT is equal to 14.5 Newtons. That's how you do this problem. So I hope you understood how I worked out this problem. And uh, going forward, I will be working out more problems like this that are really complicated for students. But once you understand it, it's easy. And this is the way to go. This is the way to develop critical thinking, solving problems, and going forward that way. And it comes by practice and only practice. All right, so see you on the next video for more practice on complicated problems in physics. Thank you.